Hey fellow explorers, Samsung has just released a new phone, the Galaxy S24 Ultra. It's got five cameras on it. These are my tips and tricks about how to get the best video out of this phone, and yes, I got it in yellow. All right. Let all right, tip number one is to use the right camera for the right situation. With five different cameras, some are better if you want a stable perspective, some are better if you want to zoom in far away, others are better if you want to see yourself, and so let me talk through these different cameras, but I'm gonna do it holding the phone this way so you can see the interface, because the first thing that's a little confusing is that although there are four cameras on the rear, there are five different settings you can click through here. So let's talk about what the differences are between these different ones. So first, the wide camera, or the one that comes up as 0.6X. This one is really good for landscapes like this to get something big and wide. This is also gonna be the best if you want something super stable. So if you are walking with your phone, if you are walking with your phone, then you will find the most stable footage when you are walking to be out of the wide camera. Now, if you're shooting people, the best camera overall and at low light is gonna be the regular 1X camera. This is the best camera overall. It has the highest quality. So if you can use the 1X camera, go ahead and use that one. Then there is the 3X telephoto zoom. This is good for zooming in on things. So you notice the stuff that's out there in the water, it gets a little closer, but the whole thing gets a little shakier when it's handheld. And then there is the 5X zoom. That zooms in just a little bit more. And then the one that says 10X, that's not actually a camera, that is a digital zoom that zooms in there. It's just the same as if you're cropping it in post-production, you're not getting any more quality. And if you pinch like this, you can zoom in or zoom out between those different zoom levels. Note that all of those are gonna be digital zoom levels, and so you're actually losing quality when you pinch to zoom in and zoom out. And so my suggestion to you is when you want to zoom, just go ahead and push those buttons. 0.6, 1, 3, and 5. And in this mode, it also gives you 2, 10, and 20, but those aren't real lenses. The last lens that you've got on here is the selfie lens, and you get to it by clicking this button right here. And now this starts recording from the selfie camera, the one that is right up here. So the selfie camera, great if you wanna see yourself when you're recording. What you need to do when you're using the selfie camera is you need to actually look at the camera right there. What we people, humans, tend to do when using the selfie camera is look at ourselves on the screen. It's very like you want to look at yourself because you see yourself because you want to make sure you're framed in. But if you're looking at yourself and you're not looking at the camera, then the viewers won't feel like they're looking at you. Now, the downfall of the selfie camera is the quality of the selfie camera is not as good as the rear 1X camera. And so if you want to get better footage, then you actually don't want to shoot with the selfie camera. You want to shoot with the 1X camera and you want to shoot like this because sometimes the 1x camera is a little too close when i do it like this then what i will do is instead of using the selfie camera i will actually turn it on to the ultra wide camera instead of using 1x and i will then hold the phone up uh usually this way this is gonna like totally mess with my screen recording because now it's upside down, but hopefully I'll be able to flip this video later and make it work because I'm recording on this device and this device and I'm screen recording this device to get all these things. But this way, when it's handheld, I can get a pretty wide look. This is pretty stable. And so this is a pretty good pro tip way to do your selfie shots. Again, just know you can't see yourself, but now that your self isn't there, you won't be forced to look at yourself and you'll just look straight at the camera. So the viewers think you're looking at them. Tip number two is to set a better video resolution. By default, the S24 comes in FHD 30 mode, which is basically 1080p, and you can click up here at the top and you can change that. You can select HD, which is 720p. You can select UHD, which is 4K resolution, or you can select 8K, and then you can select a variety of different frame rates. All right, now that I've fixed my hair, let's talk about tip number three. By the way, it's super windy today, so my hair is definitely going in a whole bunch of different places. All right, tip number three is if you want super steady footage, like you're doing some action camera type shots, then there's this little running dude over here, and when you click that, it applies a digital crop to the footage, and when you're in this mode, it is even more stable. So this is great if you're doing 
walking scenes, like you're going to go and walk or you're going to run and even be running right here. Like it is surprisingly stable how stable this footage is. So tip number four, we're going to get into some more of the advanced video modes. And by the way, this banding that you see across my screen, it doesn't actually look that way on my screen, but this is the effect of recording one camera with another camera and the screen ref refresh rates and things like that. So when I look at it on my screen, those zebra bands aren't there. But to get to the advanced video modes, you go up to the button that says more, and then it brings up a whole bunch of different modes here. The one we're going to take a look at right now is called dual record. This one used to be called director's view in the previous version of this phone. Now it's called dual record. And what's special about dual record is you can record two different videos. And so typically it would be like a selfie video like I have here. I'm gonna hit record on this. So now we'll look at this, a selfie video and then a video from one of the other cameras and you can kind of move it around. So this way, if you're doing like a, like a walking tour, you can look at yourself and then you can see what's forward that way. And so that you can see this a little more, you can see I can spin around and you can see uh, both of these on the screen at the same time. Now, it, this used to be called director's view because it would just record both of them together. Uh, but now you can actually save the videos in separate files. So now that front camera and the rear camera will be recorded in two different files. You can do different things with them in editing, or you can record the video as previewed, which is what I did. But what's really neat in this mode, uh, you've also got like split view options where you can split it like this, but more than just split view is you can actually come over here and select which cameras you want to record in director's view. And they doesn't have to be the selfie camera and the rear cameras, you can select the wide camera and the telephoto camera. And so this is interesting, like if you wanna do a walking tour or something like that and get like two different perspectives, like one is the wide perspective right here, and then the other one is the distant perspective. If I put them both on the sidewalk, you can see how one is the wide sidewalk and one is the close-up sidewalk. So I can see some interesting use cases here for this one. All right, another fun video mode is portrait video. You'll also find this in that more menu. What portrait video does, and it only lets you use the 1X lens for this, but portrait video allows you when you're doing your video like this to kind of blur out the background like a DSLR you feel like I'm in focus and then the rest of the thing is blurred right behind here. Beware, this is another mode where you'll want to change your resolution. You can see it started in FHD for me, but I like the Ultra HD, which is the 4K. And in addition to the blur mode, you also have these other modes where you can have a big circle effect, a color point, or a uh, glitch effect. And the glitch effect, here I'll, I'll put the glitch effect on, find the face. When I put the glitch effect on like this, then it makes me look all glitchy all around. The color point effect, it makes one part in the center in color and it makes the rest of the scene black and white. And the big circle, well, that gives you a big circle. You can change the intensity of any of these. There's a slider on the screen where you can make the big circle more blurry or less blurry. So you can just play with that and see what effect strength you like the most. Another video mode that's pretty cool is called hyperlapse. And hyperlapse is so much more than time lapse. You'll find this in the more section as well. Hyperlapse is basically, uh, yes, you can use it for time lapses where you can stand here and you can record uh, the sunrise or the sunset. But what I really like to do with the hyperlapse is I like to do uh, walking and driving scenes. So here, I'm gonna put this in the wide angle and I'm gonna do the hyperlapse and I'm gonna walk right here. And as I do this, then part of hyperlapse basically like smooths out all of the different frames and turns this walk into a sped up walk that just seems super cool when you do it. At least I think it seems super cool. And that was two minutes recorded down into just like 10 seconds of hyperlapse. In the hyperlapse, you can set uh, a resolution you wanted in. So that was in 1080 because I didn't take my advice and go through and set all of these things up on this new phone yet before recording this. Uh, if you're doing like as a time lapse or you're doing it on an unintended tripod, you can set how long you want it to record for. Maybe you want it to record for a minute, two minutes, 300 seconds. Uh, and then you can also set how many 
seconds you want it to basically go before it takes a picture or what speed it goes at. That's what you'll find up here in this auto section. Some, it, it'll tell you like, this one right here is good for recording the movement of stars. This one right here is good for recording cars streaking by at night. Now this next mode, quite the opposite of hyperlapse. This one's called super slow motion. And on the previous S23, they had slow motion and super slow motion. Super slow motion is gone. It's now just all here in slow motion. Uh, this one works with the uh, main 1X camera. It also works with the selfie camera. And if we go ahead and turn this slow motion on with the selfie camera, and I'm gonna do a quick spin. And now instead of slow motion with the selfie camera, if you do it with the rear facing camera, you have the option to change the video resolution. There's uh, 4K, 120 frames per second. So that's a quarter slow motion speed, or you can change it to 1080p FHD, and then you can get it to be one eighth speed of slow motion. So this is what it looks like if we're doing 4K, one quarter speed and I'm running, and this is what it looks like if we're doing 1080 and we're doing one eighth of speed, 240 frames per second. Oh, and I think it's also really cool that in the slow motion mode, it actually starts with like regular speed and then it slows down midway through. Uh, another way to get the slow motion, you can just record in 4K, 120 frames per second in the normal mode, and then you can slow it down in video editing software later. By the way, if you do intend to be doing some of these slow motion ones or the time lapses, definitely get yourself a tripod because uh, if you got the camera there for a long time, your arm's gonna be tired, and the slow motion also just looks a lot better when there's no camera shake. I'm having a really great hair day today. I'm sure I'm gonna look back on this video years later and be like, wow, I looked like Doc Brown from Back to the Future with that wind. All right, hopefully it works okay with the microphone. I just realized my microphone wasn't plugged in all this time. Well, some of this time, it was at the beginning and then my camera fell over on the tripod and this microphone came out and it's been a great production with the wind. Uh, but how do you make sure your audio is actually recording? Well, if I would have been using pro video mode to record, I wouldn't have had this issue because one of the neat things about pro video mode is you can actually see audio bars right on there to see whether it's recording or not. Uh, in here, there's another one where like change your video quality. You can go uh, like higher frames per second here. This is where you'll find your 4K 120 video recording. This is where you'll find 8K. You can do it at 30 or 24. And in here, there are a lot of different set. You can like change your white balance. You can change what it focuses on. You can change your aperture. You can set your ISO and uh, you can even control the microphone. So what's also cool in here, you can change the microphone, whether it goes to the front or whether it goes to the rear. You can change whether it's connected to the USB microphone, which is on what I'm recording right now not on this device, but I'm using the DJI mic right here. More on equipment in a moment. Uh, you can also connect Bluetooth devices for the microphone. So if you've got like some Samsung pods or something like that, you can record from the Bluetooth microphones. You can also record a Bluetooth mix where it will record mixed from the Bluetooth mic and mixed from what's in here. So you could give somebody the Bluetooth mic and they're far away and you can record from the device at the same time. Uh, so those are some pretty neat features. And if you're recording in the FHD quality or lower, you can even change like contrast and brightness and things like that while it's recording too. Note that that feature is not available if you're recording in the UHD 4K mode. All right, now that you know all the cool settings and buttons on the phone, let me tell you about some of the gear you'll want from the trunk of my car, because this is where I've got the gear. All right, we talked about keeping your camera steady and stable. You'll want to use a tripod for that. Any tripod will do, as long as it holds a cell phone uh, and it's heavy enough that it doesn't get blown down in the wind. Ha, ha, ha. All right, um, what I think is also, if you want your phone extra stable, is to get yourself a gimbal. This is the DJI OM6. Um, what I like about this gimbal is it has a uh, kind of like selfie stick attachment to the gimbal. So you can record yourself stabilized right here. But this thing, you can kind of move around, shake around. I also like with that selfie stick, you can get some interesting creative shots as you kind of like hold the camera up high. 
It comes with a little tripod leg attachment right here, and it folds up nice and small. You get this like little magnetic clamp that you put on your phone, and then you put that on there. Um, what I don't like about the OM6 is I feel like the motors are a little weak for this phone. This phone is big and heavy, uh, and so after like prolonged periods of usage, I find that the gimbal has a tendency to like whack out a bit. What I mean by whack out, it just decides it's not gonna hold the phone anymore because it like overheats in the elements that it uses to balance. So I find for balance, the DJI OM4 to actually be better. Uh, it doesn't have the telescoping selfie stick, but I find that maybe the motors are a little bit stronger on the OM4 than on the OM6, but I do like the telescoping feature of that. I use the selfie stick one when I need length, and I use this one, the OM4, if I need duration. Now, what I find myself holding the phone with the most is actually not a gimbal, it's actually with this setup right here. And to sufficiently show this to you, I need to back up a little bit because we're gonna need some distance. Uh, what this is, is this is a Insta360 selfie stick that you can extend out quite a bit. So this works well for vlogging at a distance, kind of like this. In order to angle it, what I have on top of the Insta360 selfie stick is a little Joby ball head that you can see right there, sold separately. And then on top of the Joby ball head, I have a Manfrotto cell phone mount. And what I also like about this, this selfie stick, like it doesn't, you don't have to turn anything, you just pull it out, it has good tension, it goes pretty, pretty long, it has a nice wide handle, but then at the bottom of the handle, uh, you can push this button right here, and then you get some tripod legs that come out. And while I wouldn't want to put my phone really at like full extension like this on the ground because it can be pretty windy and this isn't super stable, but for something that's like in a hotel room or something that's like in a restaurant where I'm shooting like an eating scene, then that works out to be pretty good. Uh, if you wanna like, find those various parts. I have links in the description below to the selfie stick, the ball head, and the cell phone clip. Hat tip to Jefferson Graham of Photo Walks TV for turning me on to that particular setup. And now, finally, audio recording. Um, it's good to have a microphone because audio is one of the best parts of video. If people can't hear you, they won't watch the video. And so my favorite wireless microphone setup to work with cell phones is the DJI Mic 2. This is the kit that it comes in. It comes in this little bag that has the windscreen, the microphone receiver. There's a part that goes on the cell phone. And then in this little charging case, uh, it'll keep the two microphones plugs for um, Apple iPhones or USB. And then it'll charge them up about three different times in there. And so you've been listening to me most of the time when it's been working through the DJI mic. Uh, I guess it was interesting for the video that you could hear when it didn't working. That's what the onboard mics on the, uh, actually I use the audio from both the S24 and the S23 sound like, but you could tell much better when the microphone's right up close. And now that we know all the technical stuff about how to create better videos, I just wanna share with you some physical mechanics about how to use a cell phone camera well. It's kinda like the way the real camera people would. Take two, take three. And now that we know all the technical stuff about settings and equipment, I just wanna share some physical things about how to actually hold and handle your cell phone that'll help level up your cell phone video game, whether you're using the S24 Ultra or any other cell phone, frankly. So my first tip is a do not, do not do this. What's this? This is a pan shot. This is, you know, from every home movie from the 1980s until now, people do this. It doesn't, it just never looks good. You want to have more cinematic movements, the things you see in movies. What do you see in movies? You see them move the camera forward and you see them move the camera backwards. And they'll often do this on a dolly, but you can do this just by pushing your hands forward or pushing your hands back. Or if you're going a distance, walking forward or walking back with this little kind of a, a ninja walk, as I like to call it. Use two hands, hold it about here, you know, at about like neck level, it gives you the most stability. The other thing is if you wanna have some cool looking shots is don't just always hold the camera at eye level, try some dolly shots where you get the camera up high and shoot down low, 
Or when I say down low, get some shots where you're down low. Like some of the cool shots of the water, I don't wanna drop this camera in, but some of the cool shots for the water are the ones where you actually kinda of like get down here and shoot the water. So don't be afraid get to get some interesting angles like that. Or if I was shooting this pier, you know, I can shoot it from eye level like this, or I can shoot it from up high, and all of a sudden, it just looks a little bit cooler like that. Well, fellow explorers, if you enjoyed this video, you might wanna check out some of my other videos. Maybe you wanna see more of San Diego, which is where I'm shooting this. This is fabulous Mission Bay. Check out my San Diego travel guide right here, or if you wanna see some of my other travel gear reviews where I share some of my other electronics that I use to make videos, including the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. This is another one of my favorite cameras. Check out some more of these videos right here. Links in the description below. As usual, I won't say goodbye, because I'll see you over there.